get ready for the Work Better Podcast. I'm Tori McQueen, here to share stories on what's working and what's not in business and in life from humans all over the world. I believe everyone's version of success looks different, but in the end, we should all love our life's work, and in doing so, live a life of complete fulfillment. And if you don't love your work, I'm hoping you'll tune in and uncover some inspiration here to work better. What's up, my friends? Today is going to be a little bit spicy and a little bit personal with you guys as I delve into what most entrepreneurs or people in general just don't want to talk about. And today, that is me speaking about finances and the financial burden that it really takes to sometimes get the life that you want or start the business that you want or get to where you want to be. Failure happens all the time, and people have no idea the risks that come with success. We all just kind of hear the success stories and how failure is a part of it and how they rise out of the ashes on top from bankruptcy and everything all works out. But I know for many people that they have a hard time relating once the outcome is already success. Like once the picture's already painted, like they don't really care that how much you struggled initially. And I know a lot of people you know, don't have the time or or want to take the time to share this because while they're in the thick of it, they don't really want to waste any time explaining. And I totally get that also. And I'll dive more into that. But for now, I'm going to get a little personal with y'all because I made a post recently and people were checking in and I want you guys to know that I'm good. I'm okay. But I also want you to understand I'm a risk taker. And with that, I am full aware that it sometimes, like financially, it might shake things up a little bit. So let's get a little personal and like dive into what my experience has been this past year. And I'm going to be super transparent with you and say that last year officially was my worst financial year I have had in a very long time. I'm not filing bankruptcy of any of that. And if I were, who cares? But I'm not. But I'm going to say that again. I made significantly less money and profits in 2023 than I've ever made since even, ah, uh, gosh, like right after college or bef- like way back before my first corporate job, before kids. And you'll kind of hear me laughing a little bit about it because in the grand scheme of things, I don't think this is that big of a deal because we're very quickly like getting out of it. But it's just funny to think about You know, when people say cheesy cheesy things like success is not linear, you know, there's up and downs and la, 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 la. But people don't share when they're in the thick of it. So I wanted to give you guys as much personal insight as I have while I'm kind of dealing with the thick of it, okay? So here are some of the top five things that have attributed to what I feel has kind of been a net loss, okay? Number one, we pulled my husband out of police work which they're immediately wiped six figures off the board. And we did have a plan for that, but we'll dive into that more. Uh, Number two, I made more hires in my business. Number three, I lost money in my business due to uh, certain economic outcomes. Four, I invested in another business. So we doubled down and kind of went in on another side business. And number five, my kids and family is literally in the good old days mode, like full swing, five kids, foods up, sports up, parties up, we're having fun, family trips planned, all the things. So we're in full swing mode and we're having an amazing time. But with that being said, it has attributed also to the worst financial year yet. And I think it's so important for all of you to know that moving forward, so you can take whatever you want out of this as you listen and kind of relate to it or learn from it in whatever area you can. And when all the rain pours at the same time, I will say, guys, like I kind of giggle and I delve into my everything is normal coping mechanism. I think I've talked about this before in other episodes, but when part of my language, but when shit hits the fan, literally my husband and I look at each other and we laugh and we think, well, like this is normal, right? Like people deal with this all the time, right? And this is not some third world problem. Like this is a first world problem. And like I said, everything is normal. 
because it is. I cannot expect my income to continue to rise at a steady pace that I had been in the past by double, triples, you know, over what year over year if I'm continuing to take risks and leaps and bounds in my business and in our personal transitions that we have. My one income change was bound to happen, and I know I'm not alone in this. And I also know that this is a temporary valley. Like, this is not somewhere that we're going to stay. So um, I know a year from now, my, my situation will be completely different. But I know that I have friends out there dealing with the same thing and nobody's really sharing it. I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable talking about money, but I think it's okay to talk about. And I'll share that I have friends who've dealt with the same thing. Um, Some have had to file bankruptcy. Some are ending in divorce. Some are in the hole as they're gearing up to spring forward to scale. It's just what happens. And even people and many smaller businesses around me I've chatted with are having a hard time. They're having a hard time keeping their heads above water for various reasons, like not finding solid employees that want to work or, you know, clients or state regulations coming into effect that are changing their business or consumer spending is down. There's so many variables in business out there that are putting the financial strain on so many families and businesses. So families and businesses are are all kind of in this boat. And not all of them, but a lot of them are. And not just entrepreneurs, but people at the corporate jobs are being laid off left and right at these big companies because these big companies are also trying to save face in their businesses and at the end of the day have to make investors happy to make a profit, you know? And they're unsure about whether they get to show up to work tomorrow or have to be let go. It's everywhere. You guys could even Google. Go to a Google search and Google all the businesses that are going bankrupt in your state or even in the U.S. this past year or even year to date. It's literally everywhere. Businesses from top to bottom. Again, it's normal. And it's not uncommon for some businesses to go bankrupt and just start over or pivot again without consumers even knowing. Like builders at any time can file bankruptcy re-change things over and then wipe all their debts and then just continue to build without you even noticing that that's what they did and nobody even cares and nobody even sees the shift happen, mostly because no one talks about it. And I don't even think it really needs to be talked about, but the reason I'm talking about it is so that way you guys can see that, that things like this happen and it's not a deal breaker for these big businesses. It's not a deal breaker for you know, people as a whole, like, unless you let it be. The shift is happening right now. And you can either choose to grit it out or just flail and drown, right? So it's kind of a mindset thing. So when you scroll the socials or watch what is happening, I want to remind you that there is a lot going on and being dealt with on the backside. And there's no shame in that. It's just sometimes you need to go through that to be able to grow and propel forward. So we're going to dive into those five things that I just talked about. But let me just start out by saying that with the loss monetarily, there are so many positives that came out of it, and we are still continuing to rise out of it. And I'll be getting into those as well. But first, I want to chat about these top five things. So number one, let's talk about pulling James out of police work why we did it and what happened when we did it. Okay. So he was in the police force and got injured. And not only was it a scare, but the way the injury was handled and the way he fell and just another body on the line, you know, feeling and just the way his body had to handle things moving forward, we realized it wasn't worth the risk, especially when he can just be replaced by another body. Right. Um, why volunteer, you know, everything you have when you've got so much more opportunities elsewhere. And it's not like the income there would increase even at a rate that inflation is increasing, right? So it's not like staying there would really give them that secure of a of a retirement plan to where it would keep up with the rate that at which inflation is going, right? So even if he did stick it out and risk everything, the income just cannot keep up, especially with like five children. Totally not worth the risk based on what we wanted out of our lives. 
he felt like he did his time and enjoyed his time. And after the injury, he was ready to move forward. And I think his body was actually ready to move forward also. And we weren't quite sure what he would do next, but him being home was exciting to us. And we had built our businesses mostly while staying home with the kids with little help here and there. And we wanted to keep it that way. And him having the home time while I could take a leap and deep dive into our business with real estate and our other ventures was kind of our idea. And of course, he would help out in areas, but really having him home was going to be the stability that we needed to be able to leap into our other ventures and our real estate business. However, I feel like I fully flopped on my part. Him being home was so great that we really just started enjoying our time. Like our time as a family was so fun. And when you're at home hanging out, it's not like we want to just sit around and be lazy. Like we are out doing things all the time. So if it weren't for my business, we'd be um, going and doing something fun. And, you know, I'd continue to work on the business and we'd go do something fun and he'd be taking our kids somewhere. And of course I wanted to go. So I will say like him being home was great, but the intent was that I would work on certain things and spend so much of my time in another area. And I think that that's where my heart and my reality really shifted because him being home, we were all just kind of so in the honeymoon phase of that for a little longer than we probably should have. So there was that. So pulling him out, losing six figures, just imagine that. And me not really doubling down on the things that I should have been doubling down on. (laughs) So there's that. Second, I made more hires and investments in my real estate business. I brought on another teammate to help carry the load right before getting hit with some unexpected challenges in the business. So um, he came back. We scaled up the business. And there comes a time in business where you need to hire and make room for good people on board. And Sometimes in order to hire, you have to hit a certain money scale. And then right before you hit a money scale, hire. Otherwise, you can't control like the load. So there's a strategic way to grow, and we're still figuring that out. But listen, like leaders eat last at times. And I'm not going to let good team members go if I can take a hit personally just to keep them on board. And if it's something that I can control. So I know a lot of people were cutting back and doing that. And I was cutting in different areas and I needed the hire at the time. And instead of really digging in and or letting this person go, I decided to just eat it. I'm going to eat it last. I'm going to really dig in and do the work and cut myself out in parts of it. Not all of it, of course, but like, I took a hit and I didn't want to let a good team member go because it's hard to find really good people. And it was a great personality fit. So I didn't. I just double hustled, right? And when growing, especially at certain levels, you have to hire before you can take on more work. And that's just, I was in that sticky situation there. It's, you know, kind of the chicken or the egg thing. And once you hire, you have to keep the machine going. And especially at the margins, if the margins are thinner initially until the workload fills up, you've got to like double time work. Again, here I am hiring more people, expecting to double time work. And then my husband's home and I'm kind of not double time working. So again, my full responsibility, that's where I was challenged the most personally in, in prioritizing like the things that I needed to double down on and do. So since hiring my teammate, we now both have to go through the learning curves to ramp back up. And we have been already in that process. So it's not a bad thing. It's just it is what it is. And it happens when growing. So anyways, hiring someone else, paying an additional salary, that attributed to a little bit of a personal loss also. And again, that will change over time. Like It's not going to continue at that rate. But that is just initially last year how it started. And number three, let's talk about some of the shifts that happened with my real estate team. Yeah, gosh, I told some people about this, but really all across the board, when rates went up and things started to shift a little bit, we had more than on average 
transactions kind of fall through on the real estate side. So sellers dropped out after we had already like prepped and photographed and filmed, put their homes on the market, gone under contract. Um, And in real estate, typically you leave room for some changes, clients changing their minds. But in the past eight years of my real estate experience, like I've hardly had any terminations and it like quadrupled in just a matter of months based on the rates going up. And mostly due to uncontrollable things like buyers losing their promotion, a seller could no longer sell at the price they need, people getting a divorce and couldn't afford it, clients deciding to let the house go to bankruptcy instead of actually list. There were many variables, right, that were reasons why buyers and sellers had shifted their mindsets and dropped out of our client pool. And it hit our team like a ton of bricks, like in 2023. So that was just in combination with everything else. So that meant we just had to work double time to get in front of more consumers to tighten up our conversations. So this wouldn't really happen as frequent and our cost of goods sold wouldn't soar out the roof, right? So we had to really tug on those numbers and make sure everything was uh, a tight run ship at that point so that we didn't leave too much on the table. And that, you know, we didn't want to, we didn't want that to keep happening. And this was just a learning point again. So I count this as a win because our team definitely learned a lot during this time and during this loss in revenue. So again, it just is something that I wanted to share because as shifts change in the market and shifts change in your business, everything plays its part. So that there was that. Hey there, friends. Are you in business and wanting to get more clients over the next six weeks? Well, I've got something just for you, the 5831 Method Session and Guide. It's all about simplifying your strategy to attract and close those dream clients. No more guesswork. Think of this as a little one-on-one session with me to figure out the exact strategies to gain those next clients to close. When you jump on board, you'll snag a downloadable guide and step-by-step video session with yours truly, so we can tailor this method to fit your unique business and goals. And imagine this, in just under an hour session, you'll have a custom roadmap ready to roll out over the next six weeks. So what are you waiting for? No matter what business you're in, head on over to toriemcqueen.com forward slash method. That's toriemcqueen.com forward slash method or find the link in the show notes to get more clients today. Number four, let's talk about me investing in another business. You guys, I love my real estate business and my team, and we're continuing to grow there. But alongside that, my husband and I have so many aspirations and goals that we want to accomplish just for our life in general. Some of it for monetary reasons, some of it just for fun. Um, But in doing so, we had been working on a side project for some time that just wasn't panning out as we had initially planned. So this was a learning curve for us as well right? We realized we got a little too relaxed in some areas of the business while having fun creating others. And I know that a lot of my friends deal with this in the business world because you want to continue to scale and grow. And sometimes you're doing it in the exact business and sometimes you're taking on other projects because once you start learning to build a business, it becomes very easy to get distracted to continue to build others. Again, like I said, this was a learning experience for us as well. And we spent a lot more time in areas that we could have assessed a little bit better. And even my coach went through the process with me and we just realized that things take way more time than what we were projecting, right? So we might have been optimistic and be like, okay, we're going to get this done in this next month and we'll be ready to go. And with the team that we had thinking that it can scale to a certain level when really instead of getting off ground in a year it can really take three years, right? Or you may expect six months, but it can take 18 months instead. Like we just overly, we didn't project correctly. And we were just totally overly optimistic during this time. And we took a little bit of focus off of our other bread and butter business, which again is a total learning experience and all part of this process. But it gave us a goal and a fresh perspective on where we would like to be or what goals we want to hit financially before going all in elsewhere as well. Um, All that while raising like five kids and all the things, let me be clear, I still think the investment will pan out. It's just a longer term game plan. 
And so, you know, this did attribute to some of the loss that we had on the financial side, just stretching ourselves way too thin. And five, the last thing that attributed to our worst financial year ever personally was the combination of growth with the business while also our family continuing to grow and change. Like we are full blown in the good old days mode parenting, loving all of that, all of it. And we are focused on like working less and trying to make even more. So in doing that pivot, there have been a few different shifts and changes and just adjusting the dials when needed. You know, in over the past 10 years, we've been able to continue to work less and continue to make more. But with James taking that huge big leap and then with me making all these adjustments, <laughs> it just kind of was like a perfect storm. But this also means that our focus has to be on point when we're doing Full on family with a business, which I can admit was not on point. Like, focus is oh, one of the hardest things for me when you care about so many people and so many clients and so many things going on because you want to do a really good job and you want to be present everywhere that you're at. And I'm not going to lie, following client and agent and employee schedules with business, along with kids, doctor's appointments, social life, sports schedules, it's pretty insane. So we had to make some tweaks and adjustments there once James came back and we realized like, okay, like now we got to adjust and have him go back to work and do that whole thing just to keep us steady a little longer or keep us padded where we felt comfortable. Anyways, but we have been loving this time in our life so much that I think we just full on were seriously having fun over the past year. Okay. Not to mention food expenses, sports, school, kids, friends, birthday parties alone has only gotten higher, just like everything else and with inflation. So not only did our income and revenue like take a little bit of a hit, but our expenses kind of went out the roof. So we all know what happens when your income goes down and your expenses go up, right? So and most of this is perfectly normal with a growing family. Things go up. But this is the first time we really felt it because, again, like I said, we had always gone up, 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 like multiples. And again, mostly because my husband stopped working and I started hanging out and we were all just a little distracted this past year, right? And in, in just our family being, we were just being. So although money wasn't as high, we definitely got so much time as a family over the past year, learning, growing, figuring out what our next move is. And we got a little comfortable and crazy, and we probably pulled James out a little prematurely from work. But here's the thing. Once we realized we no longer wanted him in police work at all, that was not the sacrifice we wanted to make. Like I did not want him hanging out any longer than he needed to. Not worth it. So in ripping off that Band-Aid, it does sting a little, but I'm glad we got him out when we did because this year we really get to think and strategize our next move and be a little more strategic about it this time. And sometimes you just have to quit one thing before you can focus on the next. So that was us with James and his career. And so there was a sacrifice there and nothing good comes without sacrifice. And you guys, I don't want this conversation to be depressing in any way because James and I are still very okay and very okay in our situation, more than okay to be exact. And our kids are so privileged in ways that some can only imagine. And we're noticing that more and more these days, actually. Um, we're doing great in so many areas overall and are super happy in life right now. And I wanted to share this because in many of my circles, from stay-at-home moms, blue-collar families, to local business owners, various entrepreneurs in multiple industries, and even at the very tippy top in the business world are dealing with this. You might recognize some of the largest companies, even like WeWork, Rite Aid, Party City, and even Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit have filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy just this last year. Hundreds of companies are going through layoffs just to stay in business, which of course is also affecting the everyday family who has to deal with the profit loss. 
It's all a part of the game. But because my kids are in baseball season right now, I'm going to throw out this cheesy analogy. You can't let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. And people don't want to talk about it because it's somehow followed by shame for whatever reason. And when reality is, it is just part of the game of life, right? Many business owners I know talk about money openly with other businesses. Um, And so do I. Like we share with each other what's working, what's not working. And with that comes the money and the numbers and where we need to spend, where we need to pull back, like all of the things. Because we know it's a tool and it's ever-changing and we're not ashamed of that. The ups and the downs are normal, just like the stock market. Money's a tool and you need to use it to take risks if you want to make higher returns. And my husband and I, like I said, us having like a stable job just wasn't going to fit the lifestyle that we wanted to create, the trajectory our kids' lives were, were going in. And I know money doesn't make everything that much better, but we we have certain goals that we'd like to hit and a certain impact we'd like to make on the world. But in all reality, money is paper, guys. I keep saying this, but it's a tool and it's all about your mindset and how much you let it control you and what you do about it that actually matters. Like no one cares about how much money you have or don't have. They do care how it affects you and how you treat people if you're not getting what you want out of it. But this is also why no one really talks about it because who cares? I wanted to have a conversation about this today because most people don't want to take the time to tell you that they're in the suck while they're in it. Champions don't want to bring you down with them. They want to get out of it as quickly as they can so they can continue to move forward in forward motion. And they just don't have the time to share. They've already moved on and they'll share when they get to the top, which is why you read all these stories on like rags to riches stories, right? But I wanted to share the perspective for those of you who think that it's all roses and rainbows. It's the sacrifice that I've personally taken to take the leaps and bounds and live out my life how I want. And one day, this will all just be a sliver of my personal story. So thank you for letting me be vulnerable and sharing this with you guys. But I'll leave you with this today. Having a financial loss sucks, but it's not the end of the world, you guys. It's all normal, okay? And the quicker you can rebound from your losses or understand and be okay with the loss, know that it doesn't reflect on your character or who you are and move on, the better you are. Embrace your shortcomings with financial loss. Sometimes it's controllable. Sometimes it's just not. You could be fired at any moment and not even have any control over that. So yes, you could pad yourself and save more and do all that. We did all those things, which is probably why we're not in as bad situation as we could be. But it's all part of the process. So many people are in this boat. But you've got to do something about it. And that's the difference. It's when you get stuck in the loss and believe you're unworthy or that there's no way out that really keeps you there. It's all a mindset. So I'm sharing this with you so I can prove to you that if I can go through the ups and downs like it's nothing, so can you. You can get through it. And who cares what anybody else thinks about it? Well, there you have it, my friends. Now that you kind of know what I've been going through, I appreciate you allowing me to be vulnerable and share my journey with you. And now you guys can really see like I am still very much in the messy middle part of entrepreneurship and still trying to figure it out every day. But I promised you that with this podcast, I would be sharing what's working and what's not. So I felt the need to be completely transparent with my experience this past year. I appreciate you for tuning in. And also know, like I mentioned, champions don't want to bring you down in talking about the failures or the things that don't work. My goal for this is to lift you up and hopefully if you're dealing with something like this that you can understand that you're not alone and also you can get out of it, but it takes work and it takes you realizing that it's all about your mindset and if you can change your mindset about money, then I believe you can change your entire life. So if that's the one nugget you can take away from this, please do so. Um, People at the top all the time are losing, but they continue to win because they just keep going. Again, it's all a part of the game. So my friends, I hope this episode serves you well. Until next time. 
Well, my friends, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Work Better Podcast. I hope you've wrapped up your golden nugget and take it with you on your journey to finish out the week. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, leave a review, or reach out to me personally if you have any special requests for guests or questions you'd like me to share on the show. In the meantime, I'll be over here rooting for you. Until next time.